having a pretty good discussion here about c collectivism and the secession thing. And I just, you know, I apologize if I got all fired up and get going. Uh, but I just, I want so badly for people to be able to just help themselves. And it shows I still try to push my opinion on the people. And that's not going to work. All I'm trying to do is get you to think outside the box, okay? I've been there. I've followed people before. I've hung on people's every word. I've believed what they were saying. I was up on the high and down with the lows. I was depressed. I was excited exactly when the other people were oppressed and excited and, and things of that nature. But now I can see things for what they are. Now I have the ability to logically look at things from outside the box and not let them emotionally affect me before I come to my conclusion. And that is something I think is a victory for myself. And if you can do that, that's a victory for you because that goes against the programming. That goes against everything we're taught. Look at how the news attacks your emotional, irrational mind, the emotional, irrational part of your mind. Look at how other hosts, uh, all their alternative news, attacks the irrational, emotional part of your brain. They don't want you to think. They prey on your ignorance. They count on you not looking it up. They count on you just going with the emotional sensationalism. And I'm not attacking anybody specifically. I've been there. I know. I was in that loop myself. But when you get out of it, it's even better. You know, we can't worry about things that we can't do anything about. We do know the dollar is going to die. We do know this country is going to get what it deserves, what it's got coming to them. So understanding that when the dollar dies, it will be a consciousness shift like nobody has ever seen in the history of this planet because there's never at this in any point in history been so many fiat currencies on the verge of death not backed by any real money any real financial wealth just paper fiat and when they fall down the house of cards is going to go with it and it will be very painful for humanity so instead of joining more groups to try to change other people's minds or to try to force opinions onto our elected officials elected representatives rather to me, we should do everything we possibly can to prepare ourselves individually. Like Ron Paul said, be the change that you want to see in the world. And all we can do is hope that when people see how happy you are, when people see how content with life you are, because, you know, when you have that energy, when you're alive, people can tell. I've told the story before when I go into town. If I'm in a good mood and I, I try to stay in a good mood, I mean, there's a lot to be thankful for, a lot to be happy about. The fact that I can do a radio show, the fact that I can eat dinner and, and wake up and, you know, sleep in a bed with a roof over my, uh, my house. And, uh, you know, uh, my, my child is just going along leaps and bounds and she hasn't had a single vaccine. She's not had one single genetically modified organism in her body. And any doctor or physician that sees her is absolutely blown away at the progress she makes. I should be thankful for those things, okay? We, we can't be down because I've said it time and time again. We're going to look back on these days and think that these were the good times. You're not going to want to waste these times. When we are the change that we want to see in the world, and this is, I guess, what I was getting at but just a, a minute ago, when you go out in public and you talk to the average people, they know something is with you. People are shocked at the grocery store, and I'm going through the lane. I'm going through the aisle. And I say, hey, how's it going? And I, like, look the cashier in the eye. How, hey, how's your day going? Almost off work? Just tough it out. You can do it. You know, hey, people are shocked. It's like they're not even used to it. I know you guys have seen the signs in the New York City subways that say do not smile at strangers. I know you guys have seen members of the public out walking around with their face glued to their iPad, their smartphone, their Game Boy, uh, whatever. You know, they covered the American Sheeple a couple days ago. That girl walking around looking for a reception walked into a rattlesnake nest. So when you have life in you, when you're not completely, you know, in like a near sleep-like trance, when you're not a near zombie, people, know, they feel it. They know. They know. And all we can try to do is be the best that we can be. Stop worrying about other people. Worry about us. Worry about you. Once again, I'm not telling you to go join some collective herd, some group, some fight the power. You have the power. Everything they do to enslave us is through our own consent. And if enough people realize that, all it takes is you withdrawing your consent, withdrawing your time. You don't, you don't want Wall Street to conquer you anymore? Well, do your part. Take every single dollar out of the bank that you can. Every single stock. If the stock market crashes and you don't have any stock, who can, why does it affect you? <laughs>
if the real estate bubble bursts or the real estate market goes back down again and you don't have a bunch of real estate besides what you are living in, why will it affect you? Why would you care? If you have all your assets out of the dollar and you're invested in commodities, precious metals, real wealth that you can hold in your hand, when the dollar dies, why is that going to affect you? Now, I know that dollar one's not quite the same as a, a bubble b bursting, but still, if you're prepared for it, if you know survival skills, if you have food, if you have good family around you, you have shelter, you have ways to have water, you have ways to be independent, which we should be striving for anyways, in my opinion, then it won't affect you as much as the people who have no idea. And, you know, the quote of the day, the Einstein quote about you can't solve a problem with the same consciousness that created it, you have to see the world anew. The other quote of the day should be they divide us so they can conquer us. And I just can't get over the fact how suspicious it is that the media is just harping the secession thing. And so many people are trying to do the secession thing. So many people. And they're going to get so close and then they're going to fall. Just like Campaign for Liberty, just like Occupy Wall Street, just like the Tea Party. And it does break my heart because these are good people. You know, these people want it. They, they see what's going on to some extent, maybe not as much as others. I'm not saying I'm better than them. But if we could only get people to realize, or if people only came to the conclusion on their own, rather, that taking all of their time, money, attention, energy, everything that they have to offer to the system, if they could take it out, that hurts the system so much more than playing these silly little games, fighting within the system to take the system back. The system is not designed for me. The system is not designed for you. With that being said, I want to talk about collectivism versus individualism just uh, briefly here. And then I have an interesting pledge that I'm going to read on air. I'm going to take the pledge myself from don't-tread-dot-on-me, Sons of Liberty Academy. Take the pledge. We'll get Chris Duane's take on it, see what he's saying. And, uh, yeah, then it's going to be a wrap, folks. But collectivism, collectivism is defined as the theory and practice that makes some sort of group rather than the individual the fundamental unit of political, social, and economic concern. In theory, collectivists insist that the claims of groups, associations, or the state must normally supersede the claims of individuals. You don't need a gr to join a group to demand that the federal government lets your state secede. You can secede right now. Stop watching their propaganda on the television. Eat real food. Get your money out of the dollar. Do as much as you can to be independent. And being independent is not easy. It's not walking away and just giving up. <laughs> That's, that's not what it is, because I've said this time and time again. It's very hard to be independent. Why do you think they have so many rules, regulations, permits, taxes, and everything else? So you can't be independent. It's because they know that is the key to freedom. Individualism, however, is at once an ethical, philosophical concept and an ethical, political one. As an ethical, psychological concept, individualism holds that a human being should think and judge independently, respecting nothing more than the sovereignty of his or her mind. Thus, it is intimately connected with the concept of autonomy. As an ethical, political concept, individualism upholds the supremacy of individual rights. That's a quote from Nathaniel Braden. Folks, we have to take a quick break. The short segment is over, but we're going to get into collectivism versus individualism a little bit more. The last take on secession and a pledge that I would ask all of you to take with me. Look yourselves in the mirror and do it. It was just kind of starting to scratch the surface about collectivism versus individualism. Now, this right to life, this right to liberty, and this right to pursue one's happiness is unabashedly individualistic without in the slightest denying at the same time our thoroughly social nature. It's only that our social relations, while vital to us all, must be chosen. That is what makes the crucial difference. Professor Tibor R. Mashan. And as we've seen in our society now, people believe that it's the right of the government to legislate morality, legislate stupidity, they need to force us to be nice to each other. They need to force us not to be stupid. But that gets away from individualism. That's collectivist right there. You see what I'm saying?
it's for the common good like Rick Santorum wanted to do. You know, we got to stop people from having sex with dogs, so we want to have cameras in your bedrooms to make sure you're not having sex with dogs. Well, you know what? It's up to the person. And if our people were truly educated, if they were striving to better themselves, if they had benevolence, if they wanted to treat each other how they wanted to be treated and believed in goodness and tried to strive to be better, then we wouldn't have to worry about putting cameras in people's houses to make sure they're not having sex with animals. Now, thank heavens they haven't done that yet, but it wouldn't surprise me that there'd be a huge group of people who think that's the right thing to do. But you cannot, that, that, that is collectivism, forcing your idea on somebody, working within the system, work outside of the system. It's the only way to true happiness, to find yourself, to be happy. You're not going to get it working inside the system. And that's why I hope so much that Ron Paul comes out and says, hey, I worked inside the system for 30-plus years. And he even said at the beginning of his speech last night, on paper, he didn't do a whole lot. He did reach out and inspire millions of people without a shadow of a doubt. He did help me realize what freedom and liberty was, and I uh, listened, I read his books, I listened to his speeches, and I you know, went from there and found all types of other uh, freedom-minded individuals but if Ron Paul continues to try to present solutions inside the system, then there's something seriously wrong there because the system itself is what's gone. A quote from Ayn, or Ayn Rand here, a social system is a code of laws which men observe in order to live together. Such a code must have a basic principle, a starting point, or it cannot be devised. The starting point is the question, is the power of society limited or unlimited? Individualism answers, the power of society is limited by the inalienable. Individual rights of man, society may make only such laws as do not violate these rights. Collectivism answers, the power of society is unlimited. Society may make any law it wishes and force them upon anyone in any manner it wishes. We had 120 million people who voted for the lesser of two evils in their minds. 120 million Americans who believe that their vote counted, they went out, and they voted for people who both worked for anti-American groups. Bilderberg, Council on Foreign Relations, New World Order, global government types. That's who our presidents are pawns for, okay? And I know a lot of you guys already know that. But I, the secession, 120 million Americans are still walking with their eyes closed. And you want to force it on them to secede? And I'm all for the Constitution. The Constitution says you, your state has the right to secede. Texas has got, what, what was it, 109,000 votes, 109,000 signatures, 109,000 signatures from one state. And then there's the anti-petition of Americans who are signing it that are saying strip these people of their citizenship, deport them. We cannot solve this problem by forcing our ideas on others. We cannot fix the collective problem with more collectivism. And I, I, if I sound like a broken record. I don't mean to, folks, but it's easy to say, and I guess it's harder to understand. If I would have been listening to this very show a year ago, I don't know how I'd react. I might be mad. I might call myself ignorant. I might say, this guy's a whack job. He's wimpy, uh, pacifist, whatever. But the more I learn, the more I see it works. Uh, look at the RNC. Look at what they did to all those people who tried to work within the system in the Ron Paul uh, revolution, who tried to uh, take their party back, and they just got defecated on. They don't – get out of here, crazy Ron Paul people. Yeah, what, yeah, we don't care about you. Look at what happened to the Tea Party. Most people in the Tea Party today think Ron Paul's crazy. They don't even realize it was started because of Ron Paul. Look at Occupy Wall Street. What has Campaign Liberty for Liberty accomplished? Another quote from Wayne Dunn here. The fact that most people think that pursuing one's own self-interest equates to behaving brutally or irrationally is, as Ms. Rand noted, a psychological confession on their part. In fact, it's against one's own long-term self-interest to behave irrationally or trample others. Such actions are the exact opposite of selfish. They're self-destructive. 
criminals and other sociopaths do not think in terms of how their actions affect the society around them and set bad examples for others, nor do they empathize with others, certainly not their victims, and they certainly don't feel the pride of honest achievement or of helping to build a civilization. Primitive communism once existed among all people and still survives in many uncivilized countries. All production in this stage of society is under the direction of chiefs or councils of elders. No individual responsibility exists. That's a quote from George Winder. That's another form of collectivism. No form of individual, individual freedoms, individual responsibility. That's what this country was supposed to be about. That's what the Constitution says we, we, we have had granted to us. The Constitution doesn't give us anything. Those are rights given to us by the creator of the universe. The Constitution simply puts it in writing. And I've heard, well, if they didn't do that, then we wouldn't be here today. And you're right, but it f- dare I say it has failed? Look at where we are. What is this, 237, 237 years later? We are, our founding fathers would be appalled if they were alive today. Can you imagine George Washington's face, face if he walked into an airport to see a child get molested by a TSA agent? His, would, his teeth would fall out. His jaw would drop. Can you imagine Thomas Jefferson getting pulled over at a random DUI checkpoint, asked to, be, to get out of the car and have his vehicle searched? And these things are all the norm now. I'll agree with the caller as far as the people have to learn. And no amount of of preaching to them, no amount of shaking the truth into them, no amount of yelling and appealing to their emotionally rational side of their brain and motivating the 5 to 10% of people in this country who are aware of what's going on and want to do something about it, that's not going to do anything. This country has to fall. Only then will the masses or at least a large majority of people in this country start to smell the coffee, start to realize what's really going on, start to think about independence. And I really do like the fact that, you know, my chat room is always going off the chain. We have a lot of great listeners in there, people listening all over the country, uh, all over the world. You know, and that's a really encouraging sign. But we need to challenge ourselves. This is about independence. This is about you opting out. Stop complying. Militant nonviolence. Militant resistance. And people say, oh, well, it's going to take violence. Well, if we're setting the example, if we are truly trying to be a better civilization, a better society, trying to represent the goodness that the goodness that's still left in this country. Why would you be violent? You'd be violent to defend yourself. You would only be violent because somebody was being violent towards you. That's it. That's my opinion. If anything else, I don't. then we're digressing. If you think you should be violent for any other reason, in my opinion, you're, di- you're digressing. You should only be violent if somebody's being violent to you. So why do we need to be – we don't need to be violent to people. We don't need to be violent to the sheeple. We don't need to go out there and beat them up. We don't need to go uh, riot and protest and take to the streets with our guns if our state doesn't get allowed to secede. We need to try to strive, in my opinion, strive to be the best that we can possibly be independent of this system that is enslaving each and every one of us, our mind, our spirit, our soul. And if you do that, you win right there. And the more independent you are, the more dependent on yourself you are, the easier this very turbulent future is going to be. Folks, we have one last segment. I'm going to have a pledge from the Sons of Liberty Academy I'm going to read on air. I hope that all of you stay tuned to hear it. This is the sound of... Imagine a world.